Deep Rock Galactic is a drinking simulator to see how fast you can min-max your alcohol addiction. Play mini games, piss off Hank Kill killed by Bobby. kicking barrels inside I'm the launch bay. Your... Molest a highly contagious disease that can mutate and morph your body and destroy your livelihood by taking away those close to you. You know, to troll people, you know? Oh yeah, you also kill spiders. <laughs> they forgot to mention the spiders. Welcome to Hoxis 4, a rich mineral environment filled with goodies. Swarming in this case are a variety of eight-legged insects Ooh. trying to consume you. And I don't fucking blame them. You basically burst down their door and started looting their homes. You play as four short, sturdy, sexy dwarves. And holy hell, the game is fun. Each with a unique and different playstyle. And I can't get enough of it. I literally kidnapped four midgets so I could find this loot bug and pet it. Keep digging! Please come and join with me to figure out why liking miners is awesome! That's a huge bitch. Hello guys! Boom Boom Holy moly! Hello, your computer has virus. There you go. Rocket please! Welcome to DRG, a mining operation where you mine shit, drink, have a seizure, pass out, then you do it all over again. And it makes my goose sack tingle. Deep Rock is an amazing four-man co-op game that puts back for blood to shame. Who's the fucker that made trauma? I can't fucking heal! This game is simple. You are a underpaid dwarf sent by a million dollar company to mine Jolly Ranchers. With the scrap you're given, upgrade your arsenal and see how much you can destroy the environment before Greta finds you. But before I lead you in these confusing caves, I first have to introduce you to the miners because these five foot 11 men are just built different gunner's sole purpose is to carry big guns and just fuck shit up he is all about the guns he even owns a gun grenade it doesn't make sense but it's fucking cool he also owns a personal bubble shield incredibly useful in a pinch when you need to reload but hiding in your little bubble is for giant babies just stack pure damage and let it rip do not do that it didn't work do you ever want it to feel fast do you want to spray paint your whole body in blue and run around with a mohawk well too bad because his movement ability is just horrendously slow uh don't worry guys i'll be there next full moon it's only useful when you mount yourself like a turret on a zip line so not great not terrible just a warning if you take too much damage you'll fall off the zip line but why have fun committing genocide when you could let machines commit genocide for you engineer is exactly what to expect you smack a metal for five seconds and then you have a death machine he's great for defensive missions and good crowd control but most of his gameplay is just you st standing there but his platform gun is what makes him fun i basically make my own mario forces in this game just don't forget to equip the mark 2 or you're going to end up with a lot of broken legs scout has the best movement ability you're like midget spider-man with a get out of jail free card why do you think everyone hates him he's great for reaching the most annoying parts in caves until you get stuck and yes fall damage does exist but being midget spider-man means having the most responsibility if you're unaware this game is dark and very scary each dwarves are lined up with flares, but they don't really light up that much. That's where the scout comes in with a flare gun. Because having eyes is useless if you can't see two feet in front of you. So if you're planning to play scout, get ready to shoot out flares when needed. Or expect a pleasant surprise in your mailbox. Driller is my personal favorite. Lore-wise, he literally has a list of war crimes on his resume. Also, a set Fuck, I just bit my thumb. Also, a satchel charge. I fucking love bombs! Driller, as he goes by his name, drills everything! Since this game looks like 8-bit polygon graphics, you're not stuck in this cave, the cave is stuck with you! Everything about him is gruesomely satisfying. It's like a mini Doom Slayer with all the firepower this character has. You can shoot boiling acid and watch your skin peel off. Like, I'm starting to feel bad, but I want more! More ways to tear off their limbs, more ways to bring torment to this planet. I won't be satisfied until I bring it! Now, dwarfly speaking, each of these pint-sized men are powerful enough to survive on their own, but that's not enough. This game is designed around working with other people, so Scout, make sure to listen to your engineers when to mine minerals. Gunner, make sure everything is dead within a 50 meter radius. Driller, don't kill the Scout, we still need him, because the true enemies are the elaborate and stress-inducing case system. So let's dive into the deep of Hoxis and explain why I sleep at the nightlight now.
Hoxis 04B is the most dangerous planet, crawling with the most cursed looking creatures, or the environment try to gut you. So they send you an underpaid dwarf that knows how to mine and kill, so you can fill their pockets. Isn't capitalism great? Now after picking your class, next is choosing 8 different missions, such as collecting aquak, 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 Aqua art. This thing, this thing right here. Acquiring the Forbidden Jawbreaker by escorting Doretta. An almost sentient robot that cries every fucking second. Remember, always save Dottie or I will choke slam you. Go on an egg hunt by searching for the sack of meat and cutting it open. They make good omelets. Just ignore the screaming. On-site refining is basically collecting oil. Always have a driller. It's mandatory or you're going to make the most autistic looking pipeline. Also, in no circumstances, dip your balls in liquid morphite. Illumination, pop open the cocoon, fight three terrifying bosses. What scares me is not the size, but these bosses are considered babies. I don't want to see the mother. Not only is there multiple missions to help keep the game fresh, each map is procedurally generated. There are even different biomes with their own quirks or things trying to blow you up. In the same manner, even bugs have their own variety. You have your basic glyphic grunt, glyphic grunt with a mohawk, armored glyphic grunt, chunky green boys, and a blue haired girl's worst nightmare, an oppressor. But this motherfucker is a spawn of Satan. I carry armor piercing rounds on every gun for these fuckers. It's incredible how many different enemies there are trying to grab your gunk sack. They even added robot enemies like developers. Please calm down. I could barely handle Molly. But even on top of all of that, yes, there's still more. You have small modifiers that could drastically change your gameplay. They could be as simple as giving you a speed boost or taking away your oxygen. At this point, you should realize this game has so much replayability. It's like a slot machine constantly randomized. I didn't even mention small events that could occur. So instead of explaining, I'm going to give you a scenario. We were cutting to a giant meteorite that fell from the stratosphere when a boss showed up. That's right, a boss that I thought could only be seen during elimination. But apparently, there's a small chance they could appear. In my 150 hours of playing, I did not know that. And those chaotic moments require chaotic solution. But only the brave as dwarves who are crazy enough to face the scariest parts of Hoxis are awarded modifications to their weapon, making war crimes more easier that even a cripple can do it. Are you ready to become stronger than most dwarves, facing challenges that even graybeards will still flinch? Deep dives are three missions back to back, each one harder than the last, and they will fuck you up. And it's all worth it to acquire the overclocks. Now, I don't have a lot of the good ones, mostly because it keeps giving me gunner overclocks. I don't play gunner. I have one driller overclock and it just makes my pistol full auto. I jack off every day. I could do that on my own. Now overclocks can drastically change how your gun function. You can make your gun produce radiation when fired, but your gun heats up faster than a bowl in the microwave. So the more chaotic the change is, the more the negative effects it has. So try to keep it balanced. What I run on my scout is more ammo because more ammo is life. And my secondary has micro explosive bullets. So the more I shoot into a target, Target, the bigger the explosion. So try adjusting your loadout to alleviate the problem. But go crazy! It's the non-stop chaos that makes this game never feel stale. And they clearly give a shit about what they're doing. Just look around you. All these small details do make a difference. I could get drunk in-game and start a mission while drunk. If you want more immersion, get drunk in-game and in real life for maximum <laughs> roleplay. We're in a current state where AAA studios could barely make a game fun or functional. But the store shots are A-OK! -okay. Even their battle pass shits on other games because it's fucking free. Every cosmetic here can be earned by just playing the game, including any previous seasons they made would all be available to find. I really want to explain this because I want companies to learn that you don't need to drink breast milk to make a successful game. And I want you to support these type of games for all their hard work. So come and join, season four just dropped. And here's hoping I can finally get Driller Overclocks. about the intro and outro music I use, Doomer is the guy who made the remix of this game OST. Would recommend listening. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like and see you in six months.